and expected surpluses that have, have surprised many in the market, and including myself. Um, and as the minister and I were just talking about, quite frankly, as we watch the turmoil going on in Europe, Greece has already been through this. Greece has seen a lot of what we're watching play out on a daily basis across the, across the continent. And, and we hope that that, uh, that, that that is a good thing. And while I watch certainly the, the market and others talk about 180% of debt to GDP, um, if we look at the low interest coupon and, and the long duration of that debt, and quite frankly, that tells a, a different story. Um, but we do need growth, and the minister will talk about that. We, we need FDI, and we need jobs, and quite frankly, that's why we're here. And, um, without the investment from abroad into and the confidence that has driven, uh, I think, uh, double double digit uh, tourism growth, um, which is double the, the, the median, as I just heard from the minister, of, of tourism growth anywhere in the world. Um, unless we can continue to get the investment that you all have the potential to deliver to Greece, um, and we'll need that against headwinds. Um, whether it's qualitative tightening as opposed to easing, whether it's the Fed environment um, uh, here and continued higher rates, certainly geopolitical and geostrategic uh, headwinds as well. Um, creating the jobs, creating the confidence and investment is, is a tall order. Um, we're certainly proud as city to have spent uh, 54 years in Greece. It's a long, long time. Um, and they've been, they've been great years. Our, our, our business there um, has been a success, again, like this forum for a And then in this year, both in terms of helping to bring the sovereign back to the capital markets, um, advising Alpha Bank on, on the $1 billion of, of, of MPLs, critical to addressing the ongoing bank issues and MPLs in the financial services space, the IPO of um, energy and oil, um, for those of you that don't know, that is not uh, all oil. Um, very successful IPO there. And, and and finally, just working with all of you, most of you in the room are of course, clients on the ground, and we appreciate that business. So let, let me turn now to the Minister uh, Tsakolotos, uh, who I'm proud to call a friend. Um, and really introduce him as, as not just someone with an extraordinary career, but certainly since 2015 has, has led a lot of the difficult times back to where we are uh, today. Shepherd and Greece pulled through a major promotion of export efforts, uh, attracting new investments to the, to the economy and the country, the completion of the third program, which was certainly no easy task, but probably most of it, uh, most important, as I've seen up close, is just his determination to, to chart a path to the exit uh, of the program and to actually make it happen. And, and most importantly now is the, his vision for for where we go from here. Um, so without further ado, Minister, I uh, welcome to the podium and thank you for being here. Good afternoon, everybody. I'd like to thank Jay for his kind comments, and I suppose, as you now have to call him Olga's his brother, uh, for uh, organizing this uh, uh, event for the 20th year of Olga and Nicolas are uh, wonderful in the way they organize things. They're a bit Calvinistic, must, this can't be the Orthodox. Uh, it, uh, it's, it must be something to do with New York and the lack of drink in, the, in these things, but, <laughs> but I, I'll, turn, I'll turn a blind eye to that. Um, I, I was interested that Stefan from the New York Stock Exchange said how nice it was here to have lawyers and auditors and bankers, and he didn't actually mention economists. So, so, so I, I was a bit worried that why I'm, I'm actually here. And I got the feeling that the New York Stock Exchange has the same view of economists that my granny had. Um, Forty years ago, I returned to my hometown in Prevesa, 
uh, and happened to fall on into the first day I got there, my granny's meeting with her annual, her weekly meeting with her friends, and they, she, they all asked me, how great to see you again, what have you done? I said, I've just got into university, and they said, that's wonderful, well done. What university? Um, that Oxford, wonderful, well done. That's and then they said, what are you going to study? And I said, economics. Dead silence. No, nobody spoke until one good soul said, never mind, it doesn't matter, we can't all be doctors and lawyers. <laughs> and so, um, <laughs> so I, I am an economist, uh, as well as a minister of, of finance. Let me say this, that um, before becoming a minister, one of my research interests was leading indicators of the business cycle. Um, and I now have a new leading indicator, which is the number of days I get holidays. Um, so in 2015, I had two days. In 2016, I had five days. In 2017, 10 days. And 2018, I had two weeks. So you can now have uh, a privileged epistemological insight if you want to predict Greek growth in the future. Um, one indicator to be able to follow. Um, Greek growth is back, we are out of the program, and in many ways we're following, following in the footsteps of, of Portugal. Um, we have done a huge number of reforms over the last uh, eight years. Um, we've exited the program with uh, advice of how to organize the post-program surveillance. Mario Centeno, the president of the Eurogroup and finance minister of, of Portugal, has been very generous with his help. Um, we've exited the program as Portugal with a large buffer, which means uh, that uh, more or less Greek debt is collateralized over the next two, two and a half years. And because of the debt deal, we have going forward uh, a, a clear runway. Um, I actually remember if this time last year I spoke to this audience and somebody asked me what would be a good deal on debt and I said a good deal on debt would be one that gave investors a 10-15 years runway to be able to have low financing needs and to be able to deal with uh, Greece's uh, remaining problems. So there's no post hoc ergo propter hoc here. I announced it and I think that's exactly what we did get. We got this um, deal on debt, which together with other stuff that's been going on in debt, changing our maturities from floating rates to fixed uh, rates and at low level, uh, has been very important. Um, so we've exited the, the strategy with um, a view to coming out of to the markets. Obviously, there's been turmoil since the summer, and that has been delayed. But part of the um, return to the markets is that the PDMA is returning to a normal way of acting. It's been meeting banks over the last month or so, and it should be announcing very soon um, the financing needs for 2019 and how many times uh, we'll go out. Um, I'm very proud that our head of PDMA, uh, Dimitri Tsakonas, that some of you know and is somewhere here, uh, was awarded um, uh, the prize for one of the best, the best sovereign risk manager for 2009, uh, 2018, so we can trust him that he will have a good plan for 2019. Um, we've also exited the program with a growth strategy which I spoke of uh, last year and I will come back to. Uh, but the essence of publishing a growth strategy, and it's not just an ideas document, it's a document that actually has in its uh, annex uh, a timeline so that investors can follow the progress in various areas where we think reform is needed. It also has um, within it the social program and what the Syriza government wants to do to be able to have the right balance between continuing reform and social inclusion, because we think that is the sustainable course over the future. That too, I will come back to. So the document basically is an indication that with the Syriza male government, you will not get any surprises. You might like some aspects more than others of the program, but at least you can see in a transparent way what reforms we wanted to do. We've 
carried out, which reforms are under the stage of implementation, and what will be carried out in the future. One of the areas that there will be no surprises is the fiscal side. Um, 2018 was the third straight year of overperformance. Um, so we had another social dividend for the lowest, uh, uh, the, the, the people suffering most in Greek society after the eight years of recession. It's not a great strategy to have an overperformance every year, uh, in the sense that it's a drag on, on the economy. In part, it was because of the four institutions and um, especially the IMF. I have to say especially the IMF because I can see representatives of the three European institutions here and I can't see anybody from the IMF. Um, the, the, the institutions generally had a, a, a very conservative view, a view about the yield of measures, but there were some other things that made for the overperformance. Um, there was a lot of literature recently about jobless growth. In a sense, Greece was the opposite. We had growth, but more employment than you would have suspected with that given level of growth. So that has increased the social security benefit, uh, uh, payments and has also increased the overperformance. So on the one hand, growth would have been better without the, that overperformance. Uh, and, and greater fiscal surplus than the target. But on the other hand, it's helped the credibility of the government. It's helped people to understand that when we set, tar set targets, we keep to them and we can over-perform. Uh, and that means that it's good for fiscal policy going forward. So although we have a high primary fiscal target of 3.5% for the next four years, 2022, which are, as an economist I think are too high, but the, which means that the level of austerity will still be quite large, the interesting thing is to make a distinction between levels and changes. And what we will have over the next four years at the level of changes will be expansionary fiscal policy, because if we did nothing, by 2022, the primary fiscal surplus would be 5.2%, so that gives us a 3.5 cumulative, 3.5 billion cumulative space for expenditure, uh, and that means we start this year with 910 million, which is for both growth enhancing measures and targeted social um, policy. And that's why this discussion with the IMF on whether we should reduce pensions uh, which were pre-legislated in 2019, uh, January 2019, went so smoothly because the whole of the Eurogroup and the institutions were convinced of our argument that the uh, reduction in pensions was not a structural measure, it didn't affect the long-run sustainability of the pension system, and we have the fiscal space to do some of the kind of things that the IMF and others wanted to do, because there was a, 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 a point in what they were saying. For instance, they were saying that with the Greek, uh, the envelope of Greek social spending was too skewed towards pensions and there wasn't enough on housing or child uh, benefit. And now we have the fiscal space to be able to do that, uh, to, to increase housing benefits and child uh, spending without uh, reducing pension, and at the same time doing growth friendly measures like reducing the corporate rate of income tax by 1% every year for, for, for the next four years and cutting certain social uh, security contributions. I now turn to, to, to the, the growth strategy, um, which has three main elements. I think I discussed this with you last year. The one, this is three main elements taking into account that we've done a lot of reforms. A lot of reforms are in the implementation stage and we need new reforms. What are the areas of the new reforms? They are in the public administration, the justice, uh, the slowness of justice, and the, the business environment. My role for, for this is um, creating the fiscal space for be, to be able to help the Minister of Development or the Minister of uh, Health or uh, Education. Uh, of course, last year I said that um, uh, my goal was, by the time I was here next year, to be the, the, the least significant minister in the government. Um, it's a bit like an old school teacher I had in England who always used to announce that they were leaving at the end of the year. And by the time I left, they had, he, had, he had achieved three gold watches because each year sort of <laughs> gave them. So I haven't really changed my mind. I, I still agree that um, I should be insignificant in the fact that I do 
sort of spade work for other ministers to do the job. But I have had my equivalent of changing my mind is I still think there is one very, very important reform which the Ministry of Finance should be doing over the next four or five years, and that is the restructuring of the tax system. The tax system needs to be much more stable over the long run, it needs to be much simpler, and it needs uh, to be fairer. And that is one reform which could make me of some uh, of marginal uh, importance. The public administration reforms are very important. Um, one of the things I worry about if we lose in the elections, which obviously I, um, I'm assuming we're not going to lose, is a backtracking on public administration reforms. It is almost impossible, in my view, to overstate the harm <coughs> that has been done to the Greek economy and society from clientelistic politics. The idea that if you wanted an investment license, or if you needed your pension, there had to be somebody who had to have a personal contact. That has been disastrous for the Greek economy. It wasn't inefficient. Don't get me wrong, it was a very efficient system. It was just efficient for the reproduction of political power. It wasn't efficient for the economy. It is, in my view, very critical that we continue with this public administration reform, that people have a simple system of administration and that they are able to rely that there are a set of rules, and those set of rules, whether it is to be able to get a license for a new business or, a li or to get your pension, needs no political intermediation at all. The second area is of justice and the slowness of, of, of Greek um, justice. Um, I'll keep my views on lawyers and judges to myself. Um, they have a, a tendency um, to... Uh, to uh, there's no concept of opportunity cost. The first thing we teach um, to, to students, the first year micro, is the concept of opportunity cost. If you do one thing, you can't do another. And that isn't really at the heart of, of Greek justice. So we need a, quite a lot of reforms to speed that up, because obviously that is a, a problem. The third area is the, the investment uh, environment, the business environment where we're continuing with a large number of, of, of reforms to, to, to be able to do that. The challenges that are ahead, I'm sure you'll uh, agree with me, are the banks. I don't want to exaggerate the problem of the banks. I'll remind you that the banks have been recapitalized, that they have passed the stress test, that they have been meeting their SSM targets, um, that they have been reducing the EMA, and they have when needed, be lending to the real economy. Uh, only recently there's been an extension on the lease for the Lefereus Venizelos, the main Athens airport, and that was funded exclusively um, by, by the Greek banks. I say that because people always say to me, well, how will you be able to have growth if the banks aren't able to lend? And I answer to that, um, yes, they, they, it's true, but they can lend. And it's not the only problem that Greece ha 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 faces. And it's not only a Greek problem. The problem Greece faces is not just a shortage of financing. It's also to have very good investment projects in which to be ordered to, to, to finance. And that is very important. One of the, the institutions that has helped us very much over the last uh, years is the EIB who, uh, although it's quite a centralized organization in general, in the Greek, I'm basing most of its activities in Luxembourg, in the Greek case, it's had a, quite a big team on the ground to be able to help firms to present good business plans, to be able to cooperate, uh, to be able um, to, um, to, to, to get the investment. But obviously, the, the, I, I don't want to minimize the problem of the NPLs. Um, you will be, uh, you have heard that a lot has been going on recently. Uh, there have been private initiatives from, uh, for instance, uh, Eurobank. There's been a lot of uh, uh, legislation passed to help banks reduce their uh, NPL and NP exposure through the out of work, um, uh, work out of court workout, the bankruptcy law. Uh, we are considering. Uh, to do uh, an asset protection scheme, which we think, um, people are asking me that there are various ideas going around from the Bank of Greece, from the, uh, from the Hellenic, uh, the HFSF, the Hellenic uh, Financial Stability Fund. Let me tell you, I can't announce when we'll be ready. It, it 
will be soon, but let me give you the criteria of what we want to do, which I think might be helpful. Firstly, one criterion is uh, the speed of implementation and the lack of execution risk and the ability to know, to foresee the reaction of DGCOM and other institutions. So it seems to me that Greece needs a system that is easy to implement, that people has already got a track record. People have been working on it, so I can just see the CEO there of the HFSF has been, they've been working on this uh, asset protection scheme there. So the work has been done, we have the Italian experience, and we have other people doing other ideas which could be incorporated in, into the, the main scheme uh, over the long run. So it's very important that we have a scheme that we can implement quickly, that we know what DG Com competition's reaction is likely to, to be, and, and we can then discuss with the ESA. Let me conclude with, with a final uh, two or three more, more general thoughts. Um, I think it's been exciting times for Greece. Um, it's uh, coming out from a very difficult situation. It has a lot of successes apart from the economy. I think that the compromise with our northern neighbour, uh, the former uh, Yugoslavian Republic of Macedonia, is very important. It shows that Greece can be a country that is actually leading to, to solutions and not creating problems. It's important for my part of Greece, which is northern Greece, for, for this ge geostrategically, but also for investment. If you come from a town like Salonika, and you want Salonika to be a hub for transport, energy, <coughs> commerce, and it has a big port, then not having good relations with your northern neighbour is not a good, a good idea. So the ability to solve that is very important in geostrategic terms, it's important in economic terms, but it's also very important in, in the turning back the tide of nationalism which is a fear that many of you may share with me, uh, is a, an open danger in, in, in Europe. Secondly, the Greek government has um, been uh, one of those member states in the Euro group and in the, and in the European Council, which has been at the front of trying to change and deepen the European economic and financial architecture of the Eurozone. It's one of the things that worries me um, over the last three years, that in these discussions about the Eurozone, I agree more with bankers and central bankers than with uh, traditional politicians. It, it doesn't do very good for my left-wing credibility, you see. But it, it actually is true that there seems to be a, a consensus from economists to bankers to central bankers that there that, that, that does need to be an agenda for Eurozone deeply and the kind of things like a budget for the Eurozone uh, stabilization policy. And I think the Greek government has been one of those that has been supporting that, um, uh, that process. And I, I'm, that's the second thing I'm proud of. The third thing that I'm proud of is that with the kind of politics that is, has been developing in, in Europe, and uh, like I said, many of us uh, are fear, it seems to me absolutely crucial that we have governments that have a balance between reforms and social inclusion. The lack, just having reforms without social inclusion uh, leads to desperate right-wing nationalistic politics. Uh, and in my view, it's a mistake to just attack populists without looking at the causes that create populism. It's too simple, it's too superficial. If you want to understand some of the populist, right-wing populist nationalists, just accusing and abusing them, without looking, even, I would say, to supporters of Brexit, without looking at what, where these people are coming from, what problems they have, and without politicians and bankers understanding those problems, we really will be in danger. And of course, the opposite is all true. Uh, having social inclusion without reforms and without serious, good, sound uh, financial policy is equally dangerous and, and disruptive. So I think we need a lot of governments like our own that seem to be able, are trying to balance both reform, reform drive and social inclusion. And I think that's important for the future of Greece. 
and I think it's important for the future of, of Europe. And with that, I'd like to thank you for your attention. tourism here and that alone gives us hope for the future that things will be keep on improving and th thank you very much for coming. Thank you very much. Is. And I'd like to thank the gentleman for his good words, but I, I, I definitely think it is, uh, and I'm sure Eleanor would agree with me, a very much a collective um, project we have. And that collective project is that when you're in difficult times, um, uh, progressive people can't just put their heads in the sand and say it's somebody else's business because we didn't create the mess. Um, uh, it, it is true we didn't create the mess. Uh, when we came to the crisis, um, Syriza um, was probably 3-4% of the vote. Uh, the, the, the party of Eleanor probably wasn't even in existence or it was just starting uh, at that period. Uh, the decision we took is that, uh, you know, when you face a problem, you've got to see whether you can get this right balance between reform and social inclusion. And I think, um, we're obviously not perfect. We obviously haven't got a monopoly of, of, of truth. Um, but we do think we brought back um, normality in Greece and to be able to have normal uh, political dispute, disputes. I, I think, and that maybe this is important, I think it's very important that there is left and right and they argue on policy issues. Um, because, as John Stuart Mill said, disagreement is actually the oxygen of, of democracy. Yeah, if everybody agrees, uh, and there's no difference in economic policy on, on the degree of distribution, or how you deal with climate change, a lot of people get very disgruntled and alienated. It's as if politics doesn't make any difference. I think it should make a difference whether you have a centre-left government or a centre-right government, as long as the discussion is carried out on policy terms. That's why I was so, I'm so keen that our government makes even more strides on clientelistic politics, because that cuts, us, that cuts across the genuine, serious political debates that we should be having, the degree of redistribution in, in, in an economy, uh, the, 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 the role of the public sector in health or education as opposed to the, the private sector. These are all important issues that are, I'm sure you disagree about in America uh, and we disagree about Europe. And we have to return to that kind of politics where politics is about real policy uh, um, options and rather than you know who gets in and who, who has uh, the right to appoint people and, and so on. First of all, thank you very much for bringing us an optimistic view of our country. Uh, we brought up the issue also that one of your priorities should be the modification of the tax system. This is very important because when the people are coming from the international arena of investments, they are telling us, why should we come and invest in Greece where the corporate taxation will be 30 or 35 percent and not going to Cyprus 12 percent or Guided to the other country. On the other hand, why certain sectors of the vital financial market in Greece, like real estate, are so much overloaded by taxation? So the picture that we're getting from our 
compatriots here at living overseas, and they are telling us, we do not want to do anything with Greece, we'd like to sell everything over there, take our money, because there is so much bureaucracy, so much taxation over there, and we do not know what their final outcome will be. There is also so many tax laws that they change on a daily basis, so even us, as lawyers, we cannot follow up with their changes. So please kindly let us know what would be your initiative to simplify the tax code and the tax regulation. I won't make the flippant point that I thought lawyers made their money from the complications. No, uh, <laughs> no it's a serious question and, and, and it deserves a, 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 a serious answer. But there are two factors. One is that corporate income tax is not so high as you suggested in English in Greece. It's 29% and will be reduced 1% per year for the next four years. That's part of how we're going to use our, our fiscal space. Secondly, of course there are areas where there's overtaxation. We've had the biggest fiscal adjustment, readjustment in history. You know, this has been, you know, I mean, we still have a very high 3.5% primary fiscal uh, target. So obviously there are areas that are overtaxed and we have now created this fiscal space, which, as I said, would be spent half in, in, in social targeted social programs, especially where the incidence of, of uh, poverty is very high, like children, uh, but also growth-inducing uh, uh, measures. So over the next four years, we will tr be trying to address that. Now, on the investment side, the Ministry of Economy, which is effectively the Ministry of Development, has created a framework for investment where there are stable taxes because apart from the center left center right what taxes should be I've understood that investors are of course given a choice higher taxes lower taxes they will always prefer lower taxes but even more important is the stability uh, so that they can plan ahead so that issue has been addressed but you're quite right that the, the, the real issue uh, in, in Greece is to widen the tax base address the issue of um, uh, tax evasion and avoidance to be able to create a simpler system. I mean, my only defense is that we've had this huge fiscal readjustment consolidation, so it's very difficult in crisis years to think strategically. Um, you know, the last three years have been crisis to crisis, and to actually be able to have the time to sit down and think of <coughs> what would be the tax system that would be appropriate for the next four or five years it is um, uh, very difficult. So part of my optimism is a return to normality. People will be able to come forward with such strategies of, 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 a, of a much better tax system and to be able to discuss it with public deliberation to, to uh, avoid mistakes. Thank you, sir. Um, if um, new democracy is advocating a higher growth model in their own plan, and you're advocating a, a higher social inclusion model. Do you subscribe to the trade of between the two and uh, another way? What is your, say, growth expectation for the next uh, the foreseeable future? Yeah, I wasn't aware that growth is uh, on demand. Yes, um, you know, you can have strategies for reducing taxes or do this, but you don't actually order growth. Yes, so new democracy will have to explain to you, to, to, to your humble selves, uh, what, what their plans are. I, I, I'm not sure, I mean, I'm not sure even the IMF any longer believes that there's a huge uh, equity efficiency trade-off. There's many reasons for, uh, for thinking that, yes? That in a very inequitable society, for instance, uh, you know, there is bigger pressure for distorting taxes, for instance. There's, a, there's an awful lot of evidence on that. Um, but the, 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 the real evidence that uh, um, we need to take seriously uh, the social element is the, the, the politics that's now currently, uh, we're currently seeing in Europe. Uh, if you think that reforms are important, you have to have a stable framework and to avoid reform fatigue. And, uh, Ignoring that, I think it is a very serious uh, uh, issue. Your 
Well, so, so uh, I mean, I'm really confident we'll have good growth for the next two or three years, but for me, that's not the important issue. I've discounted that. We're going to have, it's going to finish above 2% this year, it's going to be 25 next year, and I think there's every reason to think of good growth. But the, the, the real issue is that it's sustainable, and that's why the growth strategy is a central piece of our, of our, our approach, because nobody can predict also, uh, least of all, uh, e economists. Um, and so, so the, the idea is to have a growth strategy in order to, to make that uh, growth uh, sustainable. Okay, thank you very much again. Well, Mr. Minister, thank you. By the way, I'd like to mention that the Minister has not spoken from a draft. He didn't have prepared notes to so indicate his capacity to deliver the message. Uh, dear friends, I'd like to thank you all. Uh, I'd like to thank the investment banks, the banks, the law firms, the auditing firms, all the corporate. And I forgot, uh, by the way, to uh, thank Psychos uh, Energy Navigation for being not only one of the least ones of the world, but a global one of the world.